Hello and welcome to another session of the Grand Rounds. Our uh, discussion today and the presentation is from a Department of Neurosurgery at LSU Health Sciences Center. I would like to specifically thank the Chairman of the Department, Dr. Frank Kolekiai, for allowing us to videotape the important presentation by the pioneer of performer of surgery, Dr. David Klein. Dr. Klein will talk about uh, examination of uh, peripheral nerves as it relates to injuries and tumors. Again, thank you for joining us. I can always tell when a resident, intern, or medical student had not examined one of my patients. And how could I tell? Because the patient obviously had not been undressed. So we have a wonderful guy, who you all know, Gabe Tender, who is a volunteer. And so here's the first thing I'm going to ask of him. Gabe, take off your shirt. Yes, sir. So uh, I know he's been uh, working out a little bit, and he's an associate professor here at LSU. So I hope he'll forgive me someday for this. Uh, so well, I'm going to have you stand first, because uh, and just turn a little bit like this. The most neglected part of an examination for a peripheral nerve lesion is the upper back. And why do I say that? I say that because there are some very important nerves there. The accessory that uh, innervates the trapezius, okay? The long thoracic that innervates the serratus anterior. The rhomboids that are innervated by the dorsal scapula. So I'm going to look very carefully at his back and see whether there's any loss of infraspinatus, supraspinatus, deltoid, rhomboids, okay, accessory, and trapezius covers over supraspinatus. And I'm going to ask him to do some things. And the first thing I'm going to ask him to do is to push out on my hand with his hand. Now, just keep your arm bent. Yes, the, the textbooks show winging the scapula this way, by having somebody lean up against the examiner or lean against the wall. Uh, I'm here to tell you that that only tells you that one of those three things that I mentioned, accessory nerve, dorsal scapular to rhomboids, or long thoracic to serratus anterior is out. So, how do I check those? Well, I look for rhomboid atrophy, and I ask him to bring his shoulders back together. Can you do that? And he bunches up appropriately, because the rhomboids run from uh, lateral scapula, or medial scapula, over to spinous processes. And when they're out, you can see loss on one side, uh, rarely on, on both sides. I'm going to check a little bit for the trapezius and, and accessory by having him shrug his shoulders up and feeling here. But keep in mind the levator scapulae, which is not innervated by the accessory, can also elevate the shoulder. So what do I do? How do I get rid of that uh, or maybe impugn that accessory? I ask him to straighten his arm all the way out and push forward on me. Now, if his scapula wings, that's long thoracic nerve, okay? And that goes to serratus anterior. So if it wings, then I say, okay, this is long thoracic, not accessory. If, if it doesn't wing, then maybe the accessory is, is the culprit. Now, while I'm here, of course, I'm going to palpate uh, on the other side of his uh, supraspinatus and trapezius for any masses, any irregularities. I'll feel along the clavicle at the same time, and I'll go like this, and I'll go like that to see whether there's any uh, radiating pain or uh, tenels like phenomena. And although we're looking for nerve things, I'm going to have him turn his head off to the side and over to this side, and then I'm going to have him rotate rotate as I palpate, and then I'll hit him up here. And I'm getting so old now that I have trouble reaching the 